Coming up on Malta News this morning, a historic home on the campus of a Breathitt County school is destroyed after going up in flames and after dealing with a similar kind of devastation in Eastern Kentucky Theater prepares to produce a show perfect for the Halloween season. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. All righty, 633, it's Friday. We finally made it to the end of the work week. And since Brandon's not in the studio with me this morning, you know what I can say? Happy Saturday Eve. Let's head over to Letcher County where... <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's talk about fog this morning because Dakota is uh, on one, so I'm not dealing with that. I'm not even acknowledging that comment. We're just going to move right on into fog numbers. Let's take a look at the maps here this morning. One mile of visibility at Harlan and in Jacksboro, zero visibility in Middlesboro this morning, and we see some limited visibility across parts of our region, so continue to be careful as you head out the door this morning. 40 in Clintwood, 52, Moorhead, Jackson, Prestonsburg, and Pikeville, and again, we'll see a lot of uh, low to mid 40s out there this morning, some upper 40s in spots. So a little extra on your coffee meter today. A little bit of max warming needed there for your breakfast forecast as you're pouring out your frosted weather weights into the bowl. Look for temperatures right there in the low 50s, and I think they'll start to climb pretty quickly once we see the sunshine pop up here in a little bit. But again, more clouds later today. It's going to keep us in the 60s for daytime highs. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. President Joe Biden announced pardons for thousands of people convicted federally or for simple possession of marijuana. And he's using governors, he's urging governors to do the same on the state level. As Jeremy Toms explains, advocates say it is a significant step forward and they're calling for the Commonwealth to follow suit. 51 years ago, um, President Nixon declared the war on drugs. And what we've seen in those 51 years is a continual use of the criminal legal system. Kungo Jaguna with the ACLU of Kentucky says this action by the Biden administration could affect hundreds, if not thousands, of Kentuckians. There are thousands of people that are still on probation, uh, parole uh, for those violations. Tony Love has spent a decade teaching at the University of Kentucky and has focused his studies in part on mass incarceration. He says even if the people affected by this move had served out their probation or parole sentences, they still had reduced rights as a U.S. citizen until now. They'll be able to vote again. They'll be able to buy firearms again. Um, in some states, you can't have uh, public housing or public assistance like welfare if you have a felony. Housing and educational opportunities, voting rights, and... They will no longer have to to check a box that says, yes, they have been convicted of a felony when they apply for jobs. President Biden also called on governors to take this step. And that's where Love says a massive reduction in prison population could occur. Because it's at the state level that most prisoners are held. And in the, in the states, most of those convictions are drug, drug convictions. Jaguna says it's the next step his organization wants to see taken as well, to continue to correct the harm caused by more than a half century of the war on drugs. And in recovery world, we call sometimes doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result in insanity. So it's time to end the insanity. That was Jeremy Toms reporting. President Biden also asked his administration to review the way marijuana is scheduled under federal law. To some, that could mean a lot when it comes to decriminalizing the drug at the state level. Well, one man is behind bars after what the Laurel County 7580 drug interdiction team says was a major drug bust. During a traffic stop, law enforcement discovered the driver, Barry Patton of Richmond, was driving on a suspended license. A canine unit was called in and alerted police to the possibility of drugs in the car. Patton was arrested on multiple charges, including trafficking in a controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. The passenger was also cited for trafficking in a controlled substance. Police arrested a Bell County man after they say he ran from them during a traffic stop. Officers with the Middlesboro Police Department posted on Facebook saying one of their officers stopped Joshua Sutton of Middlesboro for riding an ATV on a paved road. They say Sutton took off and was caught a short time later. When officers searched him, they found what they believed to be several illegal drugs. Sutton is charged with fleeing and evading police on foot, two counts of trafficking in a controlled substance, and an ATV violation. 
Two people in Laurel County are accused of cutting holes in two church vans gas tanks. Both Ashley Cope and Natasha Scott were charged with criminal mischief, criminal trespassing, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Both were taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Earlier this week, a fire destroyed a campus home at Mount Carmel School in Breathitt County. The fire is believed to have been caused by the electrical box. The family that lived in the house was the campus maintenance man and his family. The headmaster at the school says the family lost everything, but thankfully they had another home for them to move into. We have a, had an open home um, that they can go in for the temporary, and we brought some furniture and stuff in there and got them set up. and. Um, our local church here gave them some funds immediately for them to go out that day and get some change of clothes and buy some clothes and stuff. He says alumni from the school have already been coming up with plans to rebuild the home in the same location. Since the fire destroyed their building, the people from the Artists Collaborative Theater in Prestonsburg made the show go on from borrowed stages and spaces. This month, they entered one never before seen by most people. Our buddy Forbes has more about the spooky show. A paranormal production is popping up in Prestonsburg. The play follows a young woman named Hilda who is grappling with the recent uh, death or disappearance of her mother. Um, and through that grief, she becomes very close friends with a professional medium. The Thin Place brings the talent from the Artist Collaborative Theater to a new place with a show the directors say they had to put on stage. I love the words that are on the page. I think we have a good chance at really scaring the people, but the added bonus is we're going to make them think. Going into the Odd Fellows meeting room, which has never been seen by the community. It would be the first time in 70 years that the room had been open to the public. A space now clear of its secrets, but full of stories. They've seen somebody in the window or a light come on or whatnot. And then there's a lot of uh, speculation with the Odd Fellows. There's a lot of lore. Lending itself to a new story and an intimate performance this Halloween season. I mean, the show is so scary on its own. And then to have this opportunity to put it in such a mysterious place, because there's something about live theater that's mysterious anyway. It's not pre-recorded. Anything can happen. Making the thin place. It's a perfect place for a creepy show. In Prestonsburg, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The show will also be hitting the stage at the Breaks Interstate Park, altering location, uh, alternating locations through October, starting next Friday in Prestonsburg. Six forty-one here on this Friday. We're looking at downtown Whitesburg, where things are still fairly quiet. Not much in the way of fog out there, but it's across parts of the region. So slow down, take it easy, give yourself plenty of time to get where you're going, and use those low beams. Temperatures still in the forties and fifties this morning. Fifty-four now in Moorhead's becoming our new warm spot this morning. Down to fifty-one in Pipeville, forty in Clintwood, forty-seven in London, forty-six in Hazard, forty-five in Irvine, forty-six Middlesbrough and Harlan as well. Across the region there, stadium region, I guess, sixty-three. Memphis, 61 Myrtle Beach, 63 the Big Apple. Those are our 60s on the board. And then you'll see everybody else is in the 50s with 58 in Louisville, 52 in Indianapolis, and 53 in Huntsville, Alabama. We're looking at, again, the out-the-door forecast. Looking pretty good for the first part of the day. And then some clouds start to increase, but we stay dry. Temperatures top out in the upper 60s. Dakota. All right, Brennan, thank you again. At 642, still to come here on Mountain News this morning, there's a concerning increase in gun deaths here in the U.S. We'll have the details when we come back. Thank you.